<clears throat> Before we start today's festivities, I would like to remind you that you can subscribe, like, and or follow. Wait, no, you can like, some follow, and... S hmm. There are three of them. Like, subscribe, and or follow. That's them. And tell all your friends to do the same at Podcast Land, which is not anything like Zombieland, by the way. Anchor FM, YouTube, and Spotify, and Downcast, and tune in. Oh no! But, but nobody, can. but nobody else except for Castbox, <laughs> Player FM, Castaway Two, Radio Public. Back away Radio. from the Castaway. microphone, Tony. Back away. You're caught in a loop. <sighs> There's been a temporal distortion. Oh, I like those. This is True Really News with Scott Combs and Tony Vercanis. All the news you're about to hear is true. As far as you know. <laughs> Someone did a study that listed animals Americans think they could beat in a hand to, in hand to paw combat. Wait, 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 wait. So what I thought someone was did a what a study that listed so out. someone to do a study you're generally paid correct uh, I'm assuming they you know well they were also looking at you know what happens when you pit one animal against another and decided to no throw let's in. back up again somebody <laughs> paid <laughs> okay. money money dollars somebody paid money of some sort yeah 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 I truly hope there was alcohol involved because so if this the wasn't done over like a wings and beer it's like wrong so i'm going to name the animal and you're going to call the percentage out of americans who think they can take that animal in a gotcha in a fight you ready yep yep rat 85 72 house Chickens. cat house zero 69 no i'm sorry the cat wins <laughs> they're devious little rascals goose <laughs> zero <laughs> Have you seen an angry goose? You <laughs> yes. Were, you were at Worth Parkway trying to gulf through that. It was not pretty. Yeah, and you can't stop them without just beating them to death. And we had weapons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, 61%. Braver men than I, Gunga did. <laughs> Medium-sized dog? Oh, I don't know. 70? 49%. Really? More mm -hmm. people think they can take a cat than a dog. You know, the dog who goes, what can I do for you? <laughs> I've missed you. You've only been gone eight seconds. <laughs> now, of course you can take the dog. E eagle, 30, oh, eagle, 30%. Dog yeah, out there. I, I you know. wouldn't try to attack an eagle because I don't want to go to jail. I don't, I don't want to climb the tree. I'd let the eagle win. Large dog. Uh, well, knowing Shadow, 100%. <laughs> 23%. 50%. Okay, three percent. My dog was the most submissive wolf-like creature you've ever seen. <laughs> I loved Shadow. Uh, King Cobra, zero, fifteen percent. They have those little loot bitey things. things. Play. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Kangaroo, zero, fourteen percent. I've watched the movies. Well, I've also, seen Kangaroo Jack. I've also seen some of the videos of people duking it out with. <laughs> <laughs> if they get to that, if they get on that tail and those hind legs come at you, you're, you're screwed. Done. Yeah. Done. Wolf. 25. 12. At least Real people are a little more realistic. I'm optimistic. Yeah. Crocodile. 10. Nine. Very close. Now, here's. 9% the... of people think they're going to beat a croc. Okay. I've seen it done. Of course, I've... the guy was bigger than the croc. There was an amazing thing where a leopard was getting a drink of water. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the leopard's in a crocodile's mouth. Yep. And there is, you see the thrashing and the, buff, the buff, buff, buff. and a few minutes later, you see the cat coming out of the water. <laughs> That's the problems with those South Dakotans. You give them a little green scales and they think they're men. Look at that. Any... So here's where things get really weird. This Here wasn't versus... weird enough to begin with? Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is where it. it it, it to me just takes a nasty turn. Chimpanzee. How many how many US residents think they can take a chimpanzee in a fight? 50. 17. That's still way too many. Have they seen chimpanzees when they they're They don't fighting? understand how strong chimps are. That's the They problem. also don't understand chimps don't understand rules. <laughs> right. And they will bite your face off. There is no rule in a chimp fight. <laughs> rules for a chimp fight? The first rule of chimp fighting? Don't <laughs> talk about chimp fighting um <laughs> oh boy we're gonna go down that road again no we're not <laughs> staying far away gorilla how many americans think they can take a gorilla i've seen percentage? king kong five eight percent 
Doesn't gutsy that just, bunch. That he's scares gonna rip, the crap. He's going to rip your arms right off of you while you're fighting him. But hey, carry on. While he's picking his nose. Yeah. I'm going to add that in. And grooming his partner. What percentage of Americans think they can take an elephant? Uh, I don't know. Any donkey, I suppose. Eight. Oh, come on. That was funnier than you gave it credit for. Yeah. Elephant, donkey, come on. Yeah, I heard you. Okay, fine. Let Just it letting it sink in. But tell me, I recall yeah. us, were we at a circus for the radio station? You you rode an elephant. Do I you rode think an elephant. you could take, and it was a baby elephant. It was a small, I would, I mean, it was just a little thing. Yeah. And I, no, you can't, t dude, how do you, what do you, if, are we not without massive weaponry. Exactly. That's thick hide they've got. What percentage of Americans think they can take a lion? Um, I don't know, probably the Tigers or Bear fans. Yeah, well, 8%. Yeah, see, the, there's Bear fans. There. And the last one is the most confusing to me at all because people don't understand anything. Grizzly Bear. Zero. Six. No, zero. Six. You get a pissed off Grizzly? <laughs> You're zero. done. I don't yeah. care if you have a weapon. Yeah, yeah, let's just... Look, I've shot him six times. Yeah, well, after he's done with you, he'll die. But yeah. <laughs> until then, he's busy. And you'll be grizzly poop. Wow. We are a <laughs> stupid species. Tone? Well, I've got a much milder animal and deader. Hmm. This is a story in three parts, so bear with me. I'll give you the good news first. Okay, the good news. Denmark, they're excavating massive amounts of, of, of minx corpses. Those would be the corpses of minks. We're uh -uh. talking the furry animal, not the... Uh... Yes, not the people I've worked with who are named minks, no. <laughs> the sultry minks. These are the, the ones that make... Eyes. This is the ones you make jackets out of. Okay. Well, well you used to until yeah, people not so much paint anymore. on you. Yeah. Now you have to make slippers and hide them. Yeah. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the country exterminated every single farmed mink in their country. How many mink are in Denmark? I didn't know that was a big... Came out to about 17 million, though. Uh, oh the call my. of ex I know. The cull of extreme proportions came after doctors found a coronavirus strain that was infecting people through the animals. And, of course, it was, you know, pandemic mania, so... Kill everything. Everything must die. So the dead mink were then, you know, murdered. Do you murder mink? No, you have murder of crows. The minks were killed and then buried rather hastily. You know how bloodthirsty those Danish are. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm never going to have the war. I am never going to have a Dan <laughs> It's all bear claws for me from now on. <laughs> but now there's a problem. Okay. See, I told this is just runoff. They hastily buried millions and millions of dead minks corpses, basically in two places. And now they're worried about polluting the drinking water and messing up swimming spots for folks so always at the ready the government decides we will take thirteen thousand tons of mink bodies and get them out of that grave and and hmm well luckily mayor energy center the mec helped out they're going to incinerate the corpses at their bioenergy plant in western denmark of course he did have to inform the locals there might be a certain amount of smell extinct with, as it were you know burning millions and millions of decomposing minx yeah. corpses. Mm -hmm. They did say, though, they think the stench, they think the stench <laughs> should dissipate as they start burning up. <laughs> if you're wondering about the cost, $24.4 million just for the excavation part. Oh, my. Now, let's get to the screw-ups, Shell. And these aren't the screw-ups. Mid-2020, mid right? Yeah, Pandemic yeah. wave, everything must be healthy or die. Yep. They find this strain that goes from mink to man. So the government made the decision. They pulled the trigger and said, we're going to eradicate our entire 17 million strong farmed mink population. The mink said nothing. The mink <laughs> farmers weren't as enthusiastic. Yeah, I can imagine them asking uh, for compensation. But they basically, you know, sucked it up for the greater good. Yeah. And so off the mink slaughter began. They they missed a detail though. Uh, they had actually um, no right to exterminate the animals, legally, particularly in farms that didn't have coronavirus infections. And of course, they discovered this after the culling begun had begun. Mm. Began. Of course, they did. Yeah, according to Danish law, the government needs three quarters majority in parliament to do this. They figured everybody would go along with their one for all and all for one plan. <laughs> <laughs> it's politics. So they had to backtrack. Then they recommend that farmers exterminate their minks. 
and then it goes the other way, and then back the other way. Eventually, the government, greater good argument, wins out. The Mink Massacre is completed. Done deal. Um, are they Not taking quite. lessons from us? Oh, heavens. We could take lessons from them. They have this to a science. <laughs> While you think it might be done here, it's not. Remember we mentioned the minks were murdered, uh, killed, <laughs> dismembered? They were dead. Yes. What do you do with dead things? You bury them. And this was kind of a quick sort of thing. Yep. So the call comes to an end in November. Yeah. The carcasses went to basically two mass graves in western Denmark. But a couple of weeks afterwards, people started reporting sites of... Zombie minks, little minks looking to fight with Daryl and Carol, and it's not good. Some of the dead minks began rising back to the surface. Authorities soon discovered the problem was they buried them in three feet of sandy loose soil. You know the gas that brings you to the top when you drown someone, when they drown? Guess what they do with, you know, only three, and millions of them. <laughs> so there's a reason we put things six feet under well you know um just like we did with that whale back in 1970 we could uh... <laughs> but but it seemed like a good idea call call oregon call yep. <laughs> so you've got murdering mink without you got the murder of mink without any legal reason without any yeah. legal authority to do so yeah, yeah you've got zombie minks and now the third part which seems to be going smoothly the burning of the minks so I would grab popcorn, your favorite beverage, and watch this one because it's something's going to have to go when they start burning these little rascals. <laughs> and they're all dead and having the best part of it. Yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. That wow. is deeply weird. That's just deeply, deeply weird. I looked at that and I thought, you know what? There is Our government could not do it this well. Or You know, it, it, in, in after a few years, they are going to have a festival where people wear masks of minks and <laughs> they dance around. <laughs> A mink pole or something. Day of the minks. There we go. You wear the mask, little tuxedo thing. You do the dance. Women flash you for beads. Oh, wait, we already do that. <laughs> no, Never that mind. Is, yeah. They've got that happening in New Orleans. Yeah. Um, we're going to take the Titter Wayback Machine to the Great Bavarian Dumpling War of 1967. There was one? There was How one. How did I miss out on a dumpling war? I'm a little crushed. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, right? Because we like... German I like dumplings. dumplings. I like mm. German dumplings. <laughs> Munich resident Helmut G. Winter, and who ha has a more Germanic name than Helmut G. Winter? Well, Helmut G. Winter, right? Whatever. Yeah. Come on, get to Helmut's deal here. He had grown <laughs> weary. <laughs> Helmut had grown weary of military aircraft buzzing his house. Remember, this is back in 1967, right? Oh yeah, NATO you know, and the Cold War, and... and we're deeply in the jet age. Yeah. The resourceful gentleman finally decided on a course of action that, while bold, was also oh so tasty. Built a catapult. No. Built a catapult. Began launching Bavarian potato dumplings at the plants as they God flew bless over. Bless him. <laughs> over a week's time, he launched some 120 scrumptious dumplings. It's a lot of dumplings when you think of the prep work, and you got to cook them. It's kind of a great waste of dumplings when you think about it. But... You know, it takes it takes a better part of a day in terms of total time to to make. Well, anyway, hey, you committed some... or what? At some point, you'd think he'd run into an ammunition supply problem. <laughs> Where is he located? Munich. Explain to me how he's going to have a problem getting supplies making dumplings. Well, you run out of the dumpling stuff from, when Aldi runs out of it. You can't. Dude, we'll talk. <laughs> okay. It's Germany. They have, <laughs> it, like, it flows from the rivers. <laughs> they so have little carts that go by dumpling stuff. So my, my suggestion of, uh, of a substitute of stovetop stuff. stuffing would probably not go anywhere at this point. <laughs> Boxes are cooked. <laughs> yes. Sadly, we'll never know because he didn't do that. Uh, but both West German Luftwaffe and American pilots surrendered and chose flight paths that avoided Herr Winter's house. Oh, see, I would have challenged him for a while until I got full or was tired of dumplings for a minute. This is true. Really news. Send email to TITR at netradio.network.